That salmon cooked to an internal temp of 135 degrees. All right, look, you're gonna cook that salmon that I just showed you on top of a piece of wood. That wood is called cedar. Uh, in the stores or on the internet at Amazon or Home Depot, they call it a cedar plank. It looks like this. Okay, why? Take my word for it. When you cook food on top of a piece of wood, it emits flavor that's bananas. Now, let me ask you a question. What do you think happens? Just walk with me on this. What do you think happens when you take a piece of dry wood, a cedar plank, and you put it over an open flame? Gas, charcoal, wood, what do you think happens? Take a wild guess. Don't do that. That's not good. <laughs> so you avoid that by putting your piece of wood in water. If you wanna go next level, you could put it in some kind of liquor or alcohol. This is my piece of salmon. What I'm doing here is I'm looking for bones. There's typically about 16 bones. And uh, if the person that you got it from didn't take them out, you gotta take them out. I'm separating the belly from the body because the belly is thinner, it's gonna cook faster. The body is all the same size. So I'm trying to get two pieces equal in size and weight. Those pieces are huge. They gotta be like six inches, six ounces each. I could throw the skin away, but I'm not going to because I have an idea that I wanna try that I know works. I'm gonna take the skin and I'm gonna dehydrate it and uh, use it over the top. That's a boning knife and if you push down on it, and you do it the right way, all the skin should come off and you get that. That's good work. I'm cutting slits in the skin because if I don't, when it dries, the edges are gonna curl up and I don't wanna see that. So this is my piece of wood that I have used this before and I learned the hard way that it'll catch on fire if you don't soak it in something. So we're gonna take this piece of cedar plank and we're gonna season these pieces of salmon with a se seasoning that I call Actually, I found it on the internet. It's called Greek Freak. So that's why I'm calling this a Greek Freak salad. It's everything all in one. Um, I just decided to add tarragon because I know from experience that tarragon tastes good on salmon. And another thing, if you're calling it salmon, come on, man. The L is silent. You go to a restaurant, don't be ordering salmon. Say, I'd like a piece of salmon, please. Uh, seasoning with salt. When I watch TV and they sprinkle a little bit of salt on the food, I know I'm looking at the TV saying, dude, please, it's bullshit. It's not going to taste good. You don't have enough salt. This is a thermometer I have. It's called a meter. It is remote. I do not want to have to babysit food when I'm cooking it. So I put this inside of it. It goes to my phone and it tells my phone what the temperature is so I don't have to guess. You can use a regular thermometer. So now it's the easy part, which is just building the salad. That was a green pepper. This is red pepper. Traditional Greek salad has some of the ingredients that I'm using um, and does not. I don't care. I'm doing what I want. Check the technique on the avocado. You see how I spin the avocado around a knife and then I hit the seed and it comes out. Then I just use a spoon to scoop the avocado out. That's years of doing the same thing over and over, man. Um, so like I said, Greek salad has some of the ingredients I'm using and it doesn't, but I don't care. It's what I like. It has parsley. I like cilantro, so I put cilantro in there. Um, this is oregano, which you got to be careful with oregano, especially fresh. If you put too much, it will take over your dish. So there it is. Green pepper, red pepper, cilantro, oregano. Here is the feta cheese, which I like chunks. When I bite it, I'd like to bite big pieces, big chunks of of uh, feta feta cheese, not little crumbles. Those are Kalamata olives and green olives. This is a little tool that I have, like a decorating tool. I only use it because I wanted it to be some contrast in terms of visualization when you look at the cucumbers. This is gonna leave little ridges on the side of it that, again, it's my food, I'm eating it, and I want it to look good. And I'm just cutting it up into pieces that are bite-sized. These pieces are too big, man. So you gotta cut it in half so it's easy to fit inside my mouth. Cherry tomatoes, nice, but again, too big. I don't want one of those big ones bursting in my mouth. And I just want you to listen to this. I put that in the oven for like 20 minutes and it became really crunchy and crispy. 
That's arugula. They don't normally use arugula in a Greek salad, but I like the way arugula tastes, so that's what I used. So that's the red pepper on top of that. That's the green pepper. There's no carrots in Greek salad, but I put them in there for color and contrast. There's my ridged out cucumbers. I happen to like portobello mushrooms. So I put some portobello mushrooms in there. Again, another flavor. That's the cherry tomatoes cut on the bias um, that I'm mixing up and putting in there. Now the feta cheese, we're, this, uh, my mouth is starting to water, man, just looking at this. Um, that's the feta cheese that goes in. Next are the is the chopped up cilantro. I might have used a little flat leaf parsley. That's what that is. And then we'll probably put the uh, olives in, the green and the black Kalamata olives. This is really starting to look like a Greek salad. Very looking good, looking good. Uh, so we mix that up. And meanwhile, our salmon cooked to 135 degrees. Really, I did it to 130 and ended up at like 138. Very, very moist. I normally might have broke this up with my fingers, but because I got company here watching, you know, trying to show some dignity and respect. And then there's my uh, fish skin. A little bit of salad dressing, a Greek salad dressing. You can use whatever you want, Italian dressing, it doesn't matter. Whatever dressing you like. But that, my friend, is what I call the Greek freak salad. Peace out.